Yeah. Okay. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, and thank you very much uh, to the organizers to invite me to this um, uh, really interesting um, lecture series. And uh, yeah, today I will take you to a little tour on the key role of high performance phenotyping in grape vine breeding and precision viticulture. And as Heiner uh, introduced, um, we are the Institute for Grape Vine Breeding, Geiweiler Hof. Here you see um, our nice location. Um, we have uh, three main tasks. This is, as the name said, uh, say the breeding of resistant varieties, especially with high wine quality. Uh, we, uh, we have the preserve preservation of our genetic resources and breeding research and the development of genetic markers. And the last, especially the breeding research, has the major aim to speed up the breeding um, the time for breeding. So this is divided into four departments, the wine quality research, the genetic and genomics, and uh, the precise phenotyping and precision viticulture. And around 10 years ago, we started uh, with this precise and uh, uh, phenotyping and viticulture part. Um, in these different uh, departments, there are different demands on phenotyping, the traits of interest, the precision and the repetition of the phenotypic data. And um, what you have to know that when you work with a perennial food crop like grapevine, you need the phenotyping in the field because the grapevines have to grow in the field when you will investigate it, uh, the fruits, the grape bunches, can you be characteristics and so on. And um, you have to keep in mind that there are around 30,000 wines growing in the field waiting for an annual field phenotyping. And this is the reason why we need these uh, new digital methods. Before I present you some of our uh, methods, um, I will describe a little bit the procedure of uh, grapevine breeding because you have to be imagining that it takes around 25 years from the initial crossing to variety protection. So we have the crossing in the first year and in the second year in the greenhouses uh, there is the first uh, selection of seedlings where we use uh, genetic fingerprints. So this is uh, the whole topic of marker-assisted selection. And this is a method we need uh, to identify multiple resistant candidates and seedlings uh, in an early stage of the development. Um, but currently, um, there are only molecular markers available for uh, the most two most important uh, Krebrand diseases, powdery mildew, and downy milieu. But as you will see in the next slides, grape and breeding need much more reliable markers for further traits. After this um, first or second year in the greenhouses, the plants that they selected have to be transferred to the field. And there's a procedure of at least 15 years uh, of uh, growing of the plants in the field and uh, the selection of different uh, plants, uh, maintenance and so on. And this is the most labor intensive, time consuming and uh, of course the most expensive part of the breeding, uh, grape vine breeding. So and during these different selection stages, the breeder and his experts, um, they are focused on the selection to stable disease resistance is, of course, the wine quality, which is the most important trait for the consumer later on. And they also look at the plant performance and the viticulture suitability of the grape wines. Um, and what is important to know that for these, that for this um, part uh, of the breeding procedure, there are no digital tools available. So this is something the breeder, the breeder and uh, the staff of the breeder have to do in a manual way. Concurrently, um, there are degree, increased demands on today's breeding. So uh, when you uh, look at our new uh, variety Calardus Blanc, which crossing goes back to the early 1990s, um, there are some really good uh, resistant uh, combinations and good 
this, this new variety have a very good blend performance. But uh, now uh, the demands are much more increased in the last year. So we need combined resistances for the future generations of uh, new varieties uh, towards the established and the new pathogens and pests. Uh, we are focused on yield stability and high wine quality, of course. And concurrently, we have to reduce the production footprint and uh, have to be sure to, an, uh, yeah, to, to increase the, sustain the sustainability of the production. Um, because there are two points. The first is that in the future, not all the fungicides will be available. We can use now. And uh, due to the Green Deal and this farm to fork uh, regulations, uh, the politics uh, will um, save uh, sustainable production with the year 2030. And so we have to do uh, a lot of work to um, to decrease this uh, yeah, fungicide applications. And there's another point, I think everybody knows about this, is the ch uh, changing climate and we need adapted plants. And when we talk about climate change, this is an ongoing process and the extreme weather winds are no variety anymore. So we observed in the last years, a lot of hot and dry summers, heavy and persistent, uh, persistent rain events, late frost, hails, and of course, uh, the symptom of uh, sunburn of vine grapes due to strong heat waves. So there are additional risks um, for yield losses, reduced wine quality, fungal infection pressure. And of course, it's increased risk that new pathogens will be established due to this uh, change in climate. And this is um, all of these traits uh, must be in the mind of the breeder. So when they look on plant performance, we want to develop uh, digital tools to, uh, to phenotype phenology. So that means the development, the different developmental stages of grapevines. We want to know about the yield growth characteristics, grape bunch architecture, for example. So as some visible plant behavior traits. And of course, the robust resistances are a very good and very important um, focus, especially for powdery and downy mildew. We need new resistant mechanism we want to unravel. Uh, we have to look about botrytis sponge rot, what you can see here in this image, uh, where we have to screen for physical barriers and of course, yeah, to screen about abiotic stresses. Um, to identify, to identify resilient um, genotypes. And our vision is uh, since, yeah, goes back to uh, the, the 2010, uh, to develop fast sensor-based tools for phenomics. But when we talk about grapevines and phenotyping grapevines, there are some special challenges, especially when you uh, work in the experimental vineyards. When you think about uh, the application of drones. Uh, this is really restricted because the tip of the plants uh, has not so much information. So the only thing we think we can do with uh, drones is yeah, to detect stress and some indicators for um, pests or diseases. Uh, but we want to use this uh, technique to detect, uh, for example, missing vines in our genetic repository. And we will uh, monitor the plant development, especially the canopy architecture. And when we combine this with hyperspectral imaging, it's also uh, suitable for stress detection. But when we think about health inventory or fruit related traits, um, most of these characteristics and diseases need to be screened from the side. So this is the best view of the blend, and this is the reason why most of our techniques are ground-based methods. In grapevine, there are highly diverse traits we have to look at, and we recognize at one time, okay, looking at uh, diverse traits require device sensor, diverse sensors. Uh, so we're using imaging and non-imaging sensors. We work with 3D, 2D, RGB images, and of course, hyperspectral imaging. And we have applications in the lab and the greenhouse. So what we look at is, of course, the grape bunch. We look at uh, the grape bunch architecture, the 
surface characteristics of the berries, uh, especially the, the waxes and the cuticle, which are indicators for botrytis uh, resilience. We have also applications for root phenotyping, uh, because we're also interested uh, into the rooting ability of uh, grapevines and yeah, to, to know more about the root architecture. And of course, when you um, remember the sunburn, uh, sunburn symptoms as um, yeah, a cause of climate change in these hot summers, um, we developed a screening methods where we are able uh, to, yeah, to, to screen about this uh, sunburn resilience. On the other side, a lot of our applications are yeah, in the field. That means we have uh, we work with simple consumer ca cameras, but we also have a, a spectrometer, especially near infrared spectrometer, where we can uh, observe the ripening of the berries uh, non-invasively, uh, and chlorophyll measurements as uh, indicators for the plant vitality. And um, of course. Um, we have a moving uh, platform, so we started development, development these uh, moving platforms also in 2011. Um, and now we are working with our Fino liner. And here, the Fino liner, there's a new sensor system uh, on it where we are able to move through the vineyard. And this is really important work with these moving platforms when you think about your 30,000 wines waiting for the unreal phenotype, phenotyping. That is nothing we can do on our own food. Okay, today I would like to give an insight into the phenomics of the grape bunch, uh, because this is uh, an important, or one of the most important traits for the breeder, and especially for uh, the wine grower in the later part of the breeding process. Um, so we want to evaluate the yield potential of the grape wines and of course uh, why we want to produce healthy grapes, the resilience to try the sponge rot um, or sunburn susceptibility. So since 2017, we use this uh, small handheld sensor to generate um, high resolution 3D point clouds. Um, hopefully the you will see the, the film. And the, the big advantage of this method is that it's easy, it's fast, and uh, it needs less uh, user interaction. So the people who are scanning only have the task to, yeah, to, to, to um, hang the bunches on this uh, hook and then um, using the sensor. Okay. The sensor technique on the one side is important, but much more important, or at least the same importance, is the data analysis. Because the breeder or the applicants don't want to analyze the data on their own or in a manual way. So what we need are automated um, techniques. So here in collaboration with Volker Steinhager from the Bonn University, uh, they developed and fully automated a uh, tool for the analysis of the 3D point clouds um, regarding the phenotyping of several substrates of these grape bunches, so that we got objective and precise data, precise data about the berry number, the berry size, and the bunch volume. And these are, for me, this kind of phenomic data because we were able to uh, um, do 10,000 scan, 3D scans uh, in three consecutive years. So that means 60,000 individual um, data points of bunch related traits. And it's independent, as you see in these uh, photos, from the kind of bunch. So we can apply it on a high diverse um, yeah, bunch phenotype. Um, and now it's the point, and for me, it's the key contribution uh, for these phenotyping methods is why I talk about high performance. So for me, the difference between high throughput and high performance is when we can use these techniques for the development of molecular markers, for example. So the vision is that we can, uh, when you think about this first breeding step in the second year of uh, the, the 
first year after the crossing, um, that we will uh, select this breeding material regarding yield, abiotic stresses, and um, tolerance and the quality. And uh, this is quite important uh, because uh, we need um, five further years to phenotype these kind of traits. So what we do is molecular mapping. So that is a basic um, yeah, tool to develop new molecular markers we use for this marker assisted selection. Um, and therefore we have different um, different approaches to QTL analysis. So therefore we use biparental populations and uh, genome-wide association studies from our genetic repositories. And as you can see, um, there are up to 4,000 different genotypes we can use for these kind of developments. And therefore we need this high throughput or high performance um, methods. And this, uh, where we need this 60,000 individual data points. And uh, what we did is that we analyze or that we did this QTL analysis and um, we're able to to find uh, new QTLs for these traits. And what is much more important is that we not restrict it to one mapping population. With these kind of sensor techniques, we're able to screen different populations for the QTL mapping. Um, of course, we are able to correlate our sensor data to this more labor intensive, mostly invasive ground truth data. So what you can see here is uh, the correlation between uh, the 3D gray bunch volume we observe with the sensor and the bunch rate. So with this technique, we're also able to phenotype this import important um, yield trait. What's also important is that we can investigate the trade distribution in different populations. We can look about uh, what's going in our breeding material or the genetic uh, resources. And uh, what is also important when we have new molecular markers, we have to validate them about the accuracy, about the, um, what, what uh, does uh, do the phenotype look like um, and is the marker. Uh, good for the selection for uh, medium yield, for example. And this is something we did uh, in, the in this year um, to screen our breeding mater material regarding different berry traits. So these were traits about botrytis resilience, berry size, berry skin resilience, berry cuticle properties or bunch density. And what you can see here in this um, heat map um, that you got different phenotypes uh, in this breeding material. And now the breeder have, um, have, a, have a map uh, about the different uh, breeding lines. Uh, and it's, it's a better and it's an objective um, evaluation the breeder can do with this precise phenotyping data. And that makes the selection of breeding material much more effective. And um, yeah. And what's also important is that we can use this kind of phenomic data for predictive breeding. When you think about the breeder, the practical breeder or precision viticulture, so the farmer or the wine grower, um, they want to work with results. So though they don't need the sensor data itself or precise results, uh, they want, yeah, uh, decision support system or kinds like this. So what they need are fast, low cost and easy to apply sensor systems. Yeah, they don't want to use this more complex uh, and expensive uh, sensors as our 3D scanner. And yeah, this is too much for the, for the practical um, for the practical wine crawl, for example. Um, it would be good to have tractor-based uh, remote devices. And as I said, they need results uh, of the, based on this interpreted sensor data and not the raw data itself. In the gray prime breeding, this is a high diversity blunt material. So we have, we have a um, distribution from one plant per genotype in the pre-testing phase up to 500 plants per genotype. And we have a lot of different traits we have to look at and uh, we want to phenotype. So this is a special demand for the gray brine breeding to these new technologies. And on the other side for precision viticulture, they only grow few varieties under different management conditions. 
um, and they want to detect, uh, for example, deviate hotspots within the wall vineyard to detect, okay, there's going something wrong. I have to go, what's going on there? Um, and they want yield prediction for the wall vineyard. In the pre process, we need yield prediction per plant. Um, yes, and of course, especially in precision ability culture, they need decision support systems who want to uh, yeah, develop. And um, at this point, artificial intelligence come into the play. Um, in the past, we observed uh, that we, for each trade, we wanted to phenotype, we need uh, individual software solution. So when you think about 15, 20 trades you wanted to evaluate, um, yeah, in the past, we, need, we needed around 20 different software tools for this analysis. And um, this is something um, what we, this is not, uh, yeah, suitable when we think about that these kind of tools will be applied by the breeders. So what we uh, need is one trainable tool for different trades. And this is something we, um, we showed, uh, with, again, with Volker Steinhager from the one university, and um, because they developed a prototype of an adaptable multi-trade phenotyping tool, uh, which works with different kinds of images. Um, and this is really important. So we looked at different traits and different kind of images uh, with background, without background, and it works pretty well. And this was uh, yeah, one step in the right direction because um, this is the real innovation uh, beyond, beyond this uh, adaptable software um, because we don't want uh, this uh, trade specific tools for all the traits we want to look at. And in our new project, Kairipo, we want to uh, go a step, another step further, where we combine sensors with artificial um, uh, with AI, AI trade prediction. So as established, we acquire images in the field and detect and quantify the grapes and berries. Um, there's a, a validation with ground truth, data, ground truth data, especially with our 3D point clouds and uh, the real uh, yield from the uh, from the grape wines, and then we will do the yield prediction based on the sensor data uh, under the consideration of environmental data. And this is the, the real treasure because the environment, the weather, the soil, of course, the health status, the, vitali the vitality of the grape wine, these are um, influence mainly the, the yield of a plant. Okay, so zooming up a little bit, um, the key role of uh, high performing phenotyping, it um, gives us a new opportunity to develop new selection strategies during the breeding procedure. So we are able to screen breeding material with precise methods and we will get uh, objective data, yeah, numeric data we need for statistical analysis. Um, and with this kind of data, we are able to do predictive modeling, um, especially under the consideration of environmental factors. So the, the typical interaction between the phenotype, the genotype and the environment. Um, we want to, or we use these tools for market development, especially for these complex trades. So especially the, the trade yield is influenced by different individual parameters. So we cannot only uh, doing QDL analysis for yield because that is not so successful. Uh, we need uh, to um, involve all the different sub trades for this very complex trade. And of course, uh, we want to use these tools to characterize uh, our genetic repository um, to exploit the full expansion potential of our collection. Okay. Um, I would like to thank uh, all my colleagues here from the Institute, especially Anna Kicherer uh, and the other colleagues here and um, different PhD students uh, working on different projects. I also would like to thank uh, my colleagues from the Bonn University, um, which were uh, involved in all these great bunch um, developments. And I would 
like to thank you for your attention.